from Los Angeles, California. <laughs> Woo! Come on, come on. Can we get a pan of this audience? Woo! Wow. Well, Mario. <laughs> wow. Come on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Give glory to God. This is amazing. The glory and presence of the Lord is here under the tent in Los Angeles. We are at the LA Fairplex in Pomona. And Mario, wow. What has been going on this week is nothing short of miraculous. Absolutely. And what's thrilling is to actually be together with you where you're not in one studio right. and I'm in another. We're actually in the same spot. Well, this is holy ground, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, the power that has been released in this tent over the last three days, this is the fourth and final night, and all these folks are here with L.A. traffic, That's which right. is <laughs> the worst. Jobs, L.A. traffic, kids in school, they're, they're here by the hundreds over an hour early just to be a part of the miracle that God is doing. Right. And you know, we've, we've got a pretty intense subject, but let's encourage the viewers to share this with their friends and let them know that you ought to share it. Yes, please share the video if you can. We know that they love to censor us because we speak the truth. Right. Mario, you spoke about it the other day. If you talk about dancing unicorns or something that's totally fake, they don't say anything. But when you speak about the truth and it's piercing because the truth sets the captive free, how many know they like to censor? That's right. So thank you for sharing. We appreciate it. The question that we're asking tonight is, will God destroy Los Angeles? <laughs> what do you say about that, well, Mario? I'll tell you, the reason that we ask that question, and we're going to be very deliberate about it, Todd, is because so many Christians in America believe that the big cities are hopeless right. and that they can't be reached. Well, we're going to prove to you tonight that not only is L.A. not going to be destroyed, it's going to be the next center for American revival. That's right. That's right. Look, come on, give the Lord a praise. Yes. Offer it. Yes. Yeah. I, I always tell folks, you know, I pastored here for many years. I love this city. I love California. And whenever I go around the country and in other places around the world, I always say there is a remnant in California. Oh, yeah. You need to know this. There are powerful believers in California that are standing on the promise That's of right. God, which is yes and amen, hope in a future. And standing on that promise... This morning, you and I heard oh, yeah. Marco Garcia, the pastor of the Way World Outreach in San Bernardino. Yes. For those of you that were there, was that not an amazing word? It was an amazing, and it, as, as a matter of fact, on our social media, we're going to replay his message and we're going to send it out to pastors everywhere because it was such a powerful word. But one of the points that he made is this. You can't just want God to change America. Wanting it is good, not enough. There has to be a deeper commitment to believe that we have the right and the authority in Jesus to stop evil and push it back. How many of you believe we have the power to do that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's significant that we're doing our first live here in Los Angeles. You know, yeah. there's something very significant about that because this is where we send out media and entertainment all over the world. And I believe this is the beginning. Well, it's already been happening for a while, but there's a redemption that is happening. And I've been praying for many years that Hollywood would become Hollywood. Who's praying yeah. that? And you know what? How many of you have seen some of these movies like Sound of Freedom and some of the other films that are breaking the box office? Jesus Revolution. Jesus Revolution. 
Yep. And so what's happening is God is going outside the system and there's alternative ecosystems that are being developed by the people of God. They're going around the gatekeepers, Mario, and now we find ourselves in the tent here in you know, Los we're, Angeles. We're yeah. going to show them a video right now that I want to lead into. Our first video is a young lady who was saved under this tent. It's only a few seconds long, but the power of it is this. A lot of people wonder, is everybody that's coming forward just rededicating their life? The fact is, people are getting saved. And this week, this young lady was born again right here under this tent. So can we roll that video right now? And uh, I'd love to hear it. Hi, I'm Jamie from Montrose, California. And tonight, I heard Mario Murillo speak. And he asked everybody who wanted to receive Jesus and make Jesus the Lord of their life to come forward. And I felt pushed, like, literally, like, like I was being pushed to the front. And so I wanted to make Jesus the Lord of my life and stop living the way I've been living because it's leading to death. So it's nice to be in the family of believers saved. It's the biggest miracle that there is. So I'm really grateful. Will we be coming back tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> Bringing other people. Amen. Yay. Awesome. Thank you. So how was that video? It sounded garbled from here. Was it okay? It was great. Okay, good. It's just us. Isn't that wonderful? Give the Lord praise for that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Whoever that dear young woman is, God bless her. So I want to talk to about, and I, I'm going to ask you, and poor Todd, sometimes I don't even warn him what I'm going to ask him. It's okay but he gets back at me the same way. So. <laughs> the Samaritans were considered second-class citizens in Israel. And when Jesus was heading toward Jerusalem, he had to go through Samaria because it was the shortest route. And it didn't, he was not willing to give them the credence that they wanted because he was on his way to Jerusalem. And so they were offended at him. And when Peter saw the disrespect that Christ was being given, this is in Luke chapter 9, he, uh, he said, let's call down fire on them. Let's destroy them. And Jesus said, the Bible says that he rebuked them and he said, you don't know what spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy, but to seek and save that which is lost. Now what is the point of that? That city, for all intensive purposes, became worse. Not only was it dark, but it became controlled by a sorcerer. And by the 8th chapter of Acts, it's the 7th chapter of Acts, you see Stephen Stone and the church is scattered. And the Bible tells us that they went everywhere preaching. And that's amazing because think about it, if suddenly Christianity was illegal, oh, I forgot, it is. Instead of running and hiding, they scattered out of the city, but went everywhere preaching. And Philip went down to a city that would not have existed if Peter had gotten his way, calling down fire. Instead, it said Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ to them, and demons began to cry out, and the sickness began to be healed. And in verse 10, it tells us that a sorcerer controlled them, all of them. And they all gave heed to them. The, 
But then it says, but when they heard Philip and saw the miracles that he did, the whole city repented. We cannot give up on Los Angeles. We cannot give up on San Francisco. We cannot give up on Miami and New York and St. Louis and Chicago because God is greater than all the communism and the sin and the woke that's going on. I think we need to make some noise about that. It's greater. And I think the question I have for you, you've been here for a couple of days. Right. You know this area. Yes. Well. You know the reputation this area has. Right. To put up a tent, have the crowds that we've been having. Right. Something's going on. What do you think is going on? The Spirit of the Lord is moving in this place. And, you know, I think about the scripture that says, we have authority in the name of Jesus to pull down the strongholds. And you've been talking about consecration, too. I heard right. you talk about it the other night. There's something that happens when the church unifies, consecrates, repents. You know what? It's like that scripture, I know Peter, I know Paul, but who are you? All of a sudden, you have the authority in the name of Jesus to pull down the strongholds, to cast out the demonic. And when the glory, every time we've walked into this tent, last yes. couple of days, I feel the glory and the presence of the Lord. I'm telling you, I can't stop weeping. How, how many have experienced that in here? That can't be faked. That cannot be faked. That comes through prayer. The message that you delivered right. last night and the message that Pastor Marco delivered this morning, that came from the secret place. That came from prayer and hearing from the Lord. That message this morning was a real prophetic utterance. It told us as a people of God, we've got a disciple and we also have to be a people that prays. And God inhabits the praise wow. of his people. And so the enemy, I believe he's been trying, it's like those suppression poles. You know what a suppression pole is? It's where they try to fake it and make it look like you're losing. They've done this in 2016 and 2020. I'm sure you've seen these, right? Well, the enemy has been trying to do a suppression poll on the church. He's trying to make us feel like we're losing. How do I know this? We actually saw, we came, after the message, we went into the hotel and on the TV, they were showing statistics of, oh, folks aren't going to church anymore. No. Christianity's right. going down. And I'm telling you something, the devil's trying to run a suppression poll because he sees the Spirit of God moving in miracle signs and wonders, and he sees a hungry generation that is rising up for a time as this, and he is afraid because if the church knows the authority that we have in the name of Jesus and we start to walk in that, that's the devil's worst nightmare. Somebody clap. That was good. Isn't that good? We're getting fired up in here. So what we want to say is, and we revert back to what we call the firepower perspective. In every show, we identify the problem. But we discovered that in too much of the Christian news programming, there is an attempt to alert, incite, and to raise awareness, but they don't give you a solution. This morning, when Marco Garcia was speaking, he used the analogy of Goliath going against David. And it's when they came, he said that they camped in Judah. So they went and he said that is where the praise was, the worship. The worship came out of Judah. And he said, the enemy has camped in Judah. He said, when the church was locked down by California, when Gavin Newsom sent an edict, he said, no church will be allowed to meet. No church will be allowed to worship. And immediately, too many pastors said, okay, we'll do it. He said, that is what Goliath did. He came into Judah and said, shut up. Stop your praise. How many of you want to give God glory right now? How many of you want to praise God right now? How many of you want to give God the glory right now? You know what? We are never going to let the government shut down our churches ever again. That's right. That's right. Come on. Yes. 
Yeah. And, and firepower means this. How many soldiers do you have? How well trained are those soldiers? What is the sum total of all your weapons? What is the power of your weapons to destroy enemy fortifications? Firepower is described in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. It says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to the tearing down of strongholds. So David came, Marco said this morning, David came and saw that for 60 days, Israel had said nothing. They were silent. Goliath cursed the armies of God, said, send a champion, send somebody to fight me. And the left has been waiting for the church to say, if your God's real, show us. And we are done with words. We are done with human power. We're going to see the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear, cancer vanish, and sickness healed in the name of Jesus. That's what we mean by firepower. That's right. And he said we have to have plans and strategies. And so we're going to look at a second video to show you the power of the Lord, how strong it is, but we got to set this up. It appears to me that because you're from this area, you know there's been a shift. Yes. Something has shifted. That's right. That's right. Something is different. I see it and I feel it. That's right. What are some of the things you feel are different now than before? We can't go back. We, we have to make a decision. Like you said, we're not shutting down ever again. They're not going to shut down the church. And we, this is a warrior class Christian that's standing up in this hour. We, we are not going to back down. We're not going to cave. We're not going to capitulate. We're going to stand on the word of God. Yep. That is our sword. And, you know, a lot of people were saying Romans 13 during the whole, you know, pandemic and stuff. And, you know, I always say, but we, you know, that, that applies only when the government is not tyrannical. If the government tells you to go against the scripture, that's where I say, no, I'm going to stand by the scripture. You can't. And that's it. And so what's shifted, I believe, is you overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of your testimony. What we're seeing is proof in L.A. Proof. Proof of miracles, signs, and wonders. They're happening. We're seeing them. We're showing them on the screen. And not, no one can say anything to that because it's absolute proof. And that's what shifted, Mario, is this is a church that's putting the foot forward and stepping out of the boat and onto the water. And this is to confirm what he just said. I have a yellow pad where I wrote out my prayer request the other day before the crusade in the evening. And one of the things I said, prove to Los Angeles that you are real, O Lord, by healing people on their way to the meeting. Not just in the meeting, but on their way. Where it isn't a word of knowledge, it isn't an act of my faith, and it can't possibly be made up. So we're gonna roll this video of a lady that was healed in the parking lot on her way to the meeting. And what is your name? Bridget Hansen. And you have a great testimony of healing to tell us tonight. So just tell us all about it. Well, I was coming here to volunteer at the Mario Murillo Ministries and all day in preparing, I had my back started hurting me and sciatica and I was driving in the car, it was getting really, really bad. So I was telling my friends, they believe in the a healing miracle power of God. And so I said, when I get out, you guys, you're going to have to pray for me because I don't know if I can handle this going all night with this pain. And they said, okay. And so as we were driving in here, as we came through the, the parking lot, through the entrance, it instantly vanished. And I could tell immediately that my pain was gone and I was healed. So I was thankful because it reminded me of Azusa Street when, when the power, uh, the presence of God was there to heal. It went out uh, through the city. So I was thankful. So I, I'm healed and I just had to tell somebody. And that, come on. Jesus. Hallelujah. Just Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. So here we are. 
And the moment that, again, just referring to that sermon one more time, he said, Israel was silent. And how long was the American church silent? And I remember when Obama was elected and I began to see an agenda to take and erase our faith from America. And I began to speak out about it. All these doors closed. I wrote a blog. I got so much rebuke from people why are you getting political? Why are you wandering into politics? And I explained it. I didn't wander into politics. Politics jumped into my backyard. I'm going to try that again. They jumped into my backyard. They came after my church. They tried to silence me. Many people, when the government began to do that, felt that it was the love of Jesus not to say anything back, which is not in the Bible. That version of love is not love because the Bible says love rejoices, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. So when I preached against drugs for years, nobody ever accused me of being a pharmacist. But the minute I came against politics, I was now a politician. I said, no, I'm not. When the gangs in the inner city were attacking people, I preached against the gangs. When drugs infested our kids in the campus, I came out against drugs. Now I know that woke and the left are the worst gang and the worst drug. So I just made the switch. It was as natural as it could be. But you know what I believe? I believe people are getting sick of all of this. And they made a serious mistake. They went after our kids. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Don't go after the kids. That is the red line. How many of your parents in here? Yeah. Think about it. Look at that. Wow. This is the biggest mistake the left could have made, and yet they are blunt and in our face right now. The things that they're doing are so grotesque and so absolutely disgusting, and we have to start calling a spade a spade. It's demonic. It's demonic. And right. so how do we fight the demonic, you mentioned it earlier, with the weapons of our warfare, the arsenal that we have? Call a solemn assembly, pray fast. You know, use the weapons that we have at our, at our disposal. And this is what we need to do. We need to take it head on. You know, uh, one of the stories that Pastor Marco said that really stuck to me was the one where he said he confronted that homosexual man in uh, Palm Springs. Yes. And, you know, he disarmed that man and brought him to a place where he recognized his sin. And this has been the problem is that we've been afraid to confront certain areas because maybe some people will leave. Right. Or maybe somebody won't like what I have to say. But whatever happened to the truth sets the captive free. We've got to just speak out the truth in love. And you know what? It's going to do something because the word of God does not return back void. I'm going to tell you something. When I, when I came from the world, because I was in the world and I was messed up. And when I came into the church, I could tell the people that were faking. I could tell the people that weren't authentic. And I appreciate, just like I appreciate Mario Murillo, tells it how it is. That's what people want. They want right. to hear the truth. And it might not at first be comfortable, but right. we, they realize that that's going to set them up for success. And I'm going to tell you, gangbangers and people that are on drugs and alcohol, they want to hear the truth. They want the They truth. can sense the truth and authenticity. And so this is where we're at. We need to stand firm. Stand firm on the truth. And this is, this is the church victorious. This is the church that takes back the territory for the kingdom of God. This is what we're stepping into, and I believe this begins right here, Mario. Somebody clap real loud. Is that, that's right. That's right. What must begin right now? Look at me, everybody, and those of you watching. There must be a change in our attitude. 
and we must be dominated by love. We've been dominated by a false love. We've wanted to appear nice to America. Every parent in this room understands the moment when being nice to your child is not as important as saving them from themselves. So wanting them to like you, look your child in the eye and say, I don't just like you, I love you. And because I love you, I can't let you have this. Now, how many of you believe that we need to stand up for our children? No, no, really, do you believe we need to stand up for them? Now, I want to talk to pastors for a moment, then I'm going to ask uh, Todd a question. I'm going to ask a question here. Do you love your people? Do you pastors love your people enough to know what they need to hear from you? Because love has a voice. I'm going to tell you that many times when I listen to modern preaching, I find that the subjects they're preaching on are not what people are going through. It's a problem, but it's not the problem of the, the wife and the husband. It's not the problem of the day. In fact, not only inside the church, but outside the church, in the media, and in government, they are not talking about what they should be talking about. You know, I'm going to tell you, Tucker Carlson said the subjects that are matter are being censored. The subjects that matter are being censored. Well, see, Pastor, if your people are young people going to school, being persecuted for wearing a Christian T-shirt, being persecuted for refusing to celebrate Pride Month, persecuted for saying that they know Jesus, and you're not giving them the information and the guidance because you don't want to get involved in politics. It's not politics. It's the persecution of your people. Now, now listen to me. If you get in your pulpit, you don't want to talk about this. You don't want to talk about that. You don't want to deal with it. That's what David did when he walked in. Why has no one told this giant to shut up? You're not helping me enough. Why haven't you told him why he's wrong? You know what the California State Legislature was voting on today? A bill to remove a child from parents who refuse to let them have their genitals surgically removed. And after that, there will still be pulpit, will be silent. After that, after they say, we're coming for your child because you won't let us give them gender surgery. I believe it's time to quit all of the lies, all of the garbage. That's right. And let me tell you the answer. The answer is not a political agenda. But the answer is to see that politics are demonic and to, and to rebuke the demons, rebuke the lies, and stand in the name of Jesus. Shout for the truth. Shout yes. for the truth. Yes. It's now or never. You know, the Lord showed me something this morning. We have one year. You, you, you asked the question, is, is Los Angeles going to be destroyed? But I, I have a, you know, what about America? Right. We're on the cusp of losing this country. And a lot of people are still acting as business as usual. 
And a lot of people have been following tickle ear people. I hate to say it. How many know people that are listening to people that are saying, we don't have to do anything. All you got to do is sit back and eat popcorn and everything's going to be okay. I'm going to tell you something. I did an extensive study on the prophets in the Bible because I wanted to find out if I was in error here, Mario. Yes. And in every single situation, let me tell you something. There had to be repentance. The people had to turn away from the idols and turn back to God. And the recipe for revival is 2 Chronicles 7.14. It doesn't have to be everybody. He says, if my people, if my, who are my people? These are the people of God. And God is calling us to turn back to him and to get in our, our faces. Come on. When, when we're standing on a stage in a state where the government tried to shut us down, where the government told us that we couldn't worship, and now the government is saying we're coming for your kids. My question is this, what will it take for us to realize we're at war? And my question is, to everyone here and everybody listening online, who is, like Mario just said, willing to stand and say no to Goliath? Who in this That's room? Right. Yes. That's right. That's right. It's got to be now. It's got to be now. It's got to be. We are angry that the vaccine didn't work. Especially a lot of folks that took it. And they threatened us. Right. And just using that one word, the uh, algorithm is going to see about blocking us out just over that. We were watching from our console one night that there were several hundred live audiences. It's very uh, misleading. When you have 900 or 1,000 people watching live, you think that's the only views you've got, but they'll go into the tens and hundreds of thousands. So we were watching, and here was the graph that showed how many people were watching, and then we mentioned the Fauci Ouchi, as you call it. <laughs> I love that. Like we just did. And suddenly, we lost 50% of our audience. Right then. Because somebody, I'm not going to tell you what their name is. I'll just give you their initials, Facebook. Uh, didn't like what we said. But I've got to ask you this. I've, I've really got to ask you this. As a pastor, if you love your people, you're going to feel what Paul said. He said, when we were with you, we did not withhold anything from you that was beneficial for you. Now, when you talk to God, do you know why he's not talking back? You know, some of you watching prayed and your prayer's not being answered. Here's an interesting thing. Jesus, the Bible says, God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. As far as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways. So if you pray to God to bless a project that denies the existence of the war, if you pray for God to give you the money to pay for more compromise, if you're asking God to bless a church that is in the middle of a moral war and you will not choose sides with God. That's why he's not listening to you. That's why he's not paying your bills. That's why you're not growing. That's why the churches that are exploding are peopled by pastors who are saying we will not bow to multiple genders. Right. Right. We will not right. bow right. to abortion. Right. We will not allow ourselves yes. to worship at Baal's altar. Yes. We are the people of God. Yes. Somebody shout yes. right there. Yes. Yes. Right. 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 
a lot of times we quote the scripture as the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. It's right. really the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. And we're dealing with bondage. Yes. What would happen? Let's just hypothetically think about this. If, if the churches open the altars up after every service, what, what would happen if the people of God were praying and laying hands on the sick during a service? Why not? What would happen if we took the timers away? We took the clock away from worship and we let the Holy Spirit move. I'm going to tell you what would happen. God would come and pour out. And something new would happen. Something fresh would happen. Look, what is the definition of insanity? It's doing the same thing over and over oh, no. and over again. No. Well, clearly in the last 30 plus years in the West and in the United States, we've got something wrong in the church. Yes. And I think we've got to bring the hymns back. I think we've got to bring the altar services yeah. back. But most important, we've got to bring the anointing back and let the Holy Spirit move. We've got to come expectant, people of God. Yeah. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. But what does he say? With the faith of a mustard seed, he's willing to move the mountain. We have a mountain in front of us. And all I can say is if we have big faith, watch out. God wants to move. Oh, I'm, I'm getting all excited. Are you getting excited? Yeah. I think we're, we're hearing, I'm sure we're getting comments on the Internet. People are amening and checking in from all over the place. Now, I challenge the pastors. I thank God for you. I want to encourage you. You have a very difficult job. It's never been harder to pastor than right now. Not only because of the way the world is, but because the way people have become about what a pastor ought to be. And it's unrealistic. And I've seen it. I've seen what it does to their lives. And I want to encourage them. But now I want to talk to parents. How many of you love your children? There's some of you, watch me very carefully. You love your child, but you believe it is wrong for the church to be involved in politics. I'm going to try it again. Watch me. I love my child but I believe it's wrong for the church to be involved in politics. I'm going to tell you that if you love your child, you will get involved in politics. I'm going to say it again. If you love your child, you're going to go to the school board meeting and you're going to tell them, I don't want this, this pornographic literature being given to my child. We got uh, a letter from a friend of ours that lives in Martinez, California. Her little girl came home with, from kindergarten with pride material, rainbows on it, talks about drag queens and everything else. Five-year-old. Now, I'm going to tell you something. What is that mother supposed to do? Sit in a church that won't deal with it live a Christian life that won't deal with it and not begin first. What is the answer? It's not either or, it's both and more. So what do we need to do? Pray. What do we need to do? Testify. What do we need to do? Lay hands on the sick so that the atheist will see that the power of God is real. Here's another one we need to do. I need an amen on this one. We need to cast out devils yes, in the name of on. Jesus. Yes. We need to have the authority to cast out devils in the name of Jesus. That's right. That's right. A couple years ago, they tried to stop homeschooling in California. Do you guys recall that? And you know what happened? There was a bunch of people that went up and occupied the state capitol. Yeah. yeah. And you know what they did? They tabled the bill. They stopped it. You know why? Because the folks showed up. Right. And, and you just mentioned going to the school boards. You know, we had something like that out in Nashville. All of a sudden, all these parents showed up. They didn't know what to do, Mario, nope. because they had never seen it before. All of a sudden, they were confronted. And when a spirit-filled believer walks in the room under the authority and the anointing of the Holy Spirit and starts speaking truth, let me tell you something. These folks aren't going to know it in them. That's why we got to get yeah. involved at all levels. We got to be a people of action because faith without works is dead. Amen. 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 
It, what number is that, Jim? <laughs> is that a 10? We have 10 minutes left before an amazing thing is going to happen on this stage. How many of you have heard the choir from Victory Outreach Chino? Tell the world what you think of them right now. Yeah. I'm going to get my friend Jim a Sharpie pen, so uh, he writes numbers I can. We're real high tech here. We got a yellow sheet of paper with an ink pen that says 10 on it. It's all right. With the few minutes that we have left together, we have got to make some precise statements. The power of God is real. Yes. So we want to run, we want to run a video of a man at the moment that is, how many of you saw him when his heart was healed right over here? That was an amazing moment. Let's run that video right now. I want to warn you that there's something on me that I have never felt before. This man is going to be raised from the dead right before your eyes. Not one thing, not two things, not three things, yes, ten illnesses that affect your ear, your eyes, your balance, your heart, your blood, your feet, your knees. Am I right? Miko res patane vecendo ricararabacara Well, I want to tell you, there was nothing wrong with that video. It wasn't the right one, but there was nothing wrong with it. I mean, if you know, it wasn't a wrong video. It's a different video. There was a gentleman healed in his heart over here. You know which one that is. It was listed as number four. That wasn't it, was it? No. Let's have that one right now. What I'm about to tell you, she knows. I have no way of knowing this. You've had more than one heart attack. You've had more than two. Twice. They almost pronounce you dead. The fact is, this condition in your body is from birth. It's been all your life. And you're being healed. Literally, listen to me. That the heat that you feel in your heart, in your chest, is a transplant. Because you are getting ready to be listed for a heart transplant. And instead of a heart transplant, your heart is being replaced before everyone's eyes right now. If I don't get a shout, I don't know what I'm going to do. If I don't get a shout, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh. There's a potential that we're going to run a little bit over our time, but not much. Todd, the, the greatest thing is when souls are saved. Right. And we're going to roll a third video because on Sunday night, how many of you were here on Sunday night? I was taken back by the altar call. Let's play a bit of the video of that moment when all these lost souls came forward in the tent to be saved. I want you to look at me. And I want the audience to know that we have one of the largest responses to the gospel we've ever seen right now. And I want you to listen. I know, I know that I sounded like I was giving a victory report, and I am. 
But the other half of it is even more important. It's going to take more effort than we normally do to properly care. Well, I, I'm not going to guess. I know some people will look at this and say there may be a thousand people in here. I'm not going to say that. Only God knows the true number. So I'm going to look all the way over there. And I'm going to look all the way over here. And I want every eye of you that are standing here to be on me for a moment. Now remember, and we've got just a, we're going to pray for you, and I'm going to have Todd pray for you for the next minute before we leave. And then I'm going to ask Jim Willoughby to come and introduce the choir. Audience, don't go away. We're not going to shut the show down. We're going straight in to the final night of Proof for L.A. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up right now. Todd, would you pray for Absolutely. all of our people? Absolutely. What I feel happened here is in Acts chapter 2, suddenly the people were in one accord. And tonight we're in one accord in this place. Hallelujah. And that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is going to move in this place tonight. Lord, we thank you. We give you the glory. We come expectant. Twelve people turn this world upside down, Lord. Tonight we are in one accord in Los Angeles, California, and we have come with an expectation that you are going to move. We say, Lord, move. Move in a fresh way. Lord, I pray that people are set free, delivered, healed in this room and online tonight, Lord God. I pray that many souls would come to know you as Lord and Savior. I pray, Lord God, that they would feel a touch from your Holy Spirit, Lord God. And I pray that as we have spoke tonight, the words would resonate in the very soul and being of each and every person here that listens online. Because what happened in Los Angeles, and there is a declaration of war that has been declared against the enemy. And Lord God, we as a people stand in your presence and say, send me, I'll go. And so thank you, God, that you are activating us and you are putting that fresh fire on our hearts tonight in the name of Jesus. How many in this room said amen? amen? Hallelujah. And now we want to welcome you to the final night of Proof for L.A. Anyone outside the tent, feel free to come in and take a seat now. Everybody give the Lord praise as Jim Willoughby comes to make a transition. <laughs> 